Welcome to the United Church of Fayetteville streamed worship service this second Sunday in Lent. Although our church building is currently closed, our outreach and worship activities continue. We have safely collected and donated items for our local food pantries. We've been able to maintain our portion of Genesee Turnpike in approved safety protocols. We remain in contact with our homebound congregants and individually we use Zoom at home to create musical and theological selections which, when blended together, create our weekly worship service under the guidance of our pastor. These actions have allowed us to remain a vibrant and connected congregation this past year. It is a blessing. We are anxiously awaiting the time that we can be together again in person. If you enjoy today's service, please join us. We are an inclusive community. Everyone is welcome. I got this letter in the mail about one great hour of sharing, and it's the single largest way Presbyterians come together every year as a Matthew 25 church to support different programs that the Presbyterian church offers. And it's said here, there are three programs that help improve the lives of people in challenging situations. Do you know which ones they are? Presbyterian Disaster Assistance works alongside communities as they recover and find hope after the devastation of natural or human causes disaster. Presbyterian Hunger Program takes action to alleviate hunger in the system causes of poverty so all may be fed. And the self-development of people partners with communities responding to their experiences of racism, oppression, poverty, and injustice and educates Presbyterian about the impact of these societal ills. This sounds like a really good program. I think, I think maybe that we, we'd suggest that the congregation, remember the congregation when we used to go to church yes. in, in Fayetteville? Well, all the people there, I think that um, I think it'd be a good idea if they wanted to donate to this cause, they can send their checks to the office and indicate in the memo line that it's for one great hour of sharing. And we'd like to get this in before Easter. Thanks. Friends, our time of worship creates for us a holy silence when the voices of the world are temporarily silent so that we might be still, so that we can hear the word of God. It is that word that guides us and sustains us for living and serving in the world and does not draw us permanently away from it. In this sacred time, we turn our attention to the one who is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Together, let us worship the Lord.
please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we speak your praises, celebrating your presence with us in every circumstance. We are glad that on mountain peaks and in the deepest valleys, we might encounter your wisdom, guidance, and sheltering presence. We give thanks for you in whom we live and move and have our being on this day and every day. Accept our praise now and forevermore. Amen. The Hebrew scripture reading today is from Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31. Let us listen for God's word as it comes to us from the psalmist. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep on the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Let us give thanks for God's enduring word. Amen. God's word to us continues today from the Gospel of Mark. Let us listen together. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. God always blesses the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and especially the living of the Holy Word. Please join me in prayer. 
gracious God, we give you thanks for your enduring word and for your inspiring spirit. We ask that they might come together in the word this day and in us so that we might be your son's faithful followers. It is in his name we pray. Amen. It is probably said too often by now that this year is like no other we have known, especially when it comes to engaging in traditional practices, whether they be secular or sacred. Lent is a more solemn and reflective season than the celebrative days of Advent and Christmas. Lent is not a traditional party or cookie baking season. Yet even without the social element of celebration, we may find ourselves pushing against the constraints of the season's images. We speak of Lent as a journey. We are called all year long to follow in Christ's footsteps. But during this season, we travel with him to the holy places and mark the significant events of a life of faith and sacrifice, a life to its end and then beyond. In a year when we have rarely crossed a state line, a trip to the grocery is a big deal and our gas consumption has dropped considerably. A long journey is one more thing we aren't doing. On the other hand, for us, Lent has always been a virtual journey, not a physical one. While some of us have visited the Holy Lands, few if any of us have gone on a pilgrimage marking the places to which Jesus traveled in that order and the events that happened in those places in physical space or real time. Yet, we may still feel like we are missing something this year. What might it be? Someone once said, one can only keep bees, not a single bee. Alone, a bee will die. In the same way, one can only keep Christians not a single Christian. We miss being in community. We miss it for all the reasons of shared joy and comfort, losses and griefs, fellowship and social context. However, the quote refers not to that aspect of community, but to the idea that faith, practice and service are sustained in community. Yes, it is possible for an individual to do all those things by him or herself, but it is a lot harder, especially to sustain across time. Certainly, we are not alone. As a congregation, we have worked hard and continue to work hard to bring worship into our homes, to include individuals in the congregation as worship leaders and celebrate the Herculean efforts of our musicians. Our weekly email includes prayer needs, birthdays, anniversaries, invitations to send notes and cards, organized drive-bys and drop-offs, all in order to maintain community in a different way. Those things are not to be taken lightly or discounted. But while we, especially in our tradition and culture, are careful about not making a show of our religious practice, there is undeniably something powerful about coming together in public to practice. We may or may not choose to share a discipline we have added to our spiritual lives for the season, Bible reading, worship attendance, the giving of alms, or the giving up of refined sugar. But we find ourselves with more stick when we gather. We might commit to more prayer or more worship attendance, but who's going to know if we stream worship or not? It's pretty easy to put it off or make excuses. There is something about the gathered community of faith that leads us to hold ourselves more accountable than we are when we are on our own. Even though no one has to know what our plan is, being around people who are also practicing their faith has an encouraging impact. This is not about the community of faith judging, mandating, or applying pressure, but simply the impact of being regularly around other people who share our values. Community makes self-discipline easier, which of course, brings us to another unpopular topic. We are often resistant to the idea of discipline as a joy killer, forgetting that discipline comes from the same root word as disciple, referring to study and students. 
In the context of faith, discipline refers to study, reflection, and learning. Learning who we are as creatures of God, learning about the faith and following Christ to learn what he would have us do. Discipline and being a disciple may require sacrifice at different times and levels, but they are not about punishment or pain. All that being said, the journey through Lent this year requires more, not less, discipline. It requires practice and patience, largely sustained by ourselves. It requires us to consider what disciplined steps we might take during Lent so that we might be prepared and open for the wonder and the joy of Easter morning. If you haven't already decided or begun some kind of Lenten spiritual practice, let me emphasize it is not too late. It is never too late with God. I'm going to offer some ideas for how we might engage in Lenten practices together, yet apart. We might choose daily prayer or meditation, streaming of all our worship services, including Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, daily scripture reading, using the devotions the Worship and Spiritual Life Committee located for us, or reading the Gospel of Mark. I mention that one because it is short, but more importantly because it is also ref often referred to as a passion play with an extended introduction. The Gospel of Mark is in concise style, the story of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. In our tradition, we don't generally focus on removing something from our diets, but choosing a healthier diet might re involve removing or, add, or adding something. And there is always the traditional phrase is almsgiving. There is also serving the community. You will be reading more about this opportunity soon. The Worship and Spiritual Life and Outreach Committee are supporting a joint effort on the Saturday before Palm Sunday to offer drive-by palms and a collection of st shelf-stable foods, cereals, and canned goods for the Inner Religious Council's food pantry. So we could start looking through our cabinets now for all those canned goods we bought at the beginning of the pandemic but realize we're probably not going to use, or we could include these items beginning now on our shopping list. You and I and anyone else can get palms without providing food, but this is a way our congregation has always been generous and replaces our practice of filling the food pantry barrel on every Sunday in Lent. Further, it continues the model of engaging the wider community and not just making something a UCF thing, something that we've learned more about during the pandemic and expect to continue. We usually have a Lenten calendar that provides us with suggestions for daily reflection on gratitude and help us prepare our one great hour of sharing offering. We didn't send a calendar this year because oddly enough, more than some other activities, it seems to depend on community conversation and participation. Even without a calendar, it is still possible to reflect daily on that for which we have reason to be grateful. Place a large jar or bowl in a central location. Identify a theme for gratitude and put money in the jar for your one great hour of sharing offering or for your Easter offering or both. The beneficiary of the Easter offering will be announced soon. Two ideas for themes are things for which to be grateful during this year of pandemic. Access to healthcare, eventual access to vaccinations, the internet service, laptops, tablets, and computers that allow us to go to school or work remotely. Zoom, reduced gas consumption, people at church, dedicated to caring, designing drive-bys, drop-offs, etc. Another theme might be related to recent news reports, which highlighted the fact that with regard to natural disasters, Central New York is one of the five safest places to live in the nation because of the extremely low likelihood of wildfires, hurricanes, tornadoes, or earthquakes. We also have a nearly endless supply of clean water, which will mediate some but not all of the effects of climate change. This is not to suggest that we are not responsible for addressing climate change, but simply pointing out something that will impact us less than many. 
Perhaps whenever we see news stories this Lent about struggles for the recovery of Texas infrastructure or natural disasters or even drought, we can put an offering in our jar. This theme would be particularly appropriate for the One Great Hour of Sharing offering as a significant portion of it goes to disaster relief. Riff on these ideas and come up with as many ideas as you can for gratitude or choose your own theme and make an offering every day. There are many and varied disciplined steps we might take this Lent to faithfully follow in Jesus' footsteps, deepening our faith, nourishing our spirits, and serving the world. We can even strengthen our community by sharing stories of our ideas or practices. I would love to have an article in the weekly email sharing those thoughts. They don't have to include names, but they certainly can. So please share your ideas with me that I might share them more widely so that we are traveling through Lent together insofar as is possible. Together. Let us make this year's virtual journey to Jerusalem and beyond to Easter's joy richer and fuller, alive with hope, expectation, and promise. All those things begin with the discipline of practice.
Please join me in prayer. Loving and compassionate God, your son urged us to bring everything to you in prayer. Often we hesitate, sometimes because we are afraid of pestering you with trivialities, but most often because in an age of sweeping gestures, grand acts, and in the midst of schedules that require us to dash from here to there, the truth is many times we don't notice the little things. So now we pause to remember. For a night's rest and another day to get out of bread. The smell of soup bubbling on the stove or meat roasting in the oven. The spring in our step or simply the ability to move from here to there. The love of our lives or a welcoming smile. A hand to hold or a hug. A glimpse of new opportunity. A letter from a friend a word of thanks or a word of encouragement, a tough decisions made, a child's phone call, for life and all the intimate details that give shape to our days and nights, weeks and years, for all these things, we say thank you. We lift up to the things that seem too small in scale compared to what others are struggling against. The casual comment that wounded feelings, the muscles stiff and sore from overwork, the worry over a spouse's schedule, the stress of a demanding workplace, the deferred visit with a doctor, an empty afternoon, unanswered questions, the uncertainty of how to approach a problem or how to meet a need. The task left undone that caused inconvenience. The sense that there are not enough hours in the day you have given us. For all these things, Lord, first we ask for the gift of discernment. Help us to know which ones will heal themselves, which ones to let go, and which ones to respond to before they turn into broken relationships or fragile health. Having given us insight, grant us peace with our choices and the courage to do what we must to shape our lives as you would have them be. In all things, Lord, great and small, pleasant and painful, may we know the assurance of your presence, the comfort of your love, and the power of your hope. In Christ's name we pray, with these words and the ones he taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.
the peace of Christ be.